everyone, has this ever happened to you? You're just watching a video or, or film or something and then suddenly the or maybe the audio quality would just drop. Is that audio important? One prolific filmmaker once said, if it's a good movie, the sound could go off and the audience would still have a perfectly clear idea of what's going on. But somebody else says, half the storytelling ability is in sound. With all that being said, Who's right? Well, let's find out. Just roll it! Roll the intro! All right, first of all, uh, they're both right in a way, okay? They're, Hitchcock is a legendary director and he has a really good point. And well, Harrington, he's still technically right by today's standards, no matter what, both of them are really correct. And today I won't be talking about the silent film era because well, they technically did have sound. Whenever they played the movies at theaters, a lot of the time, they had either a pianist or even an orchestra playing. Also, music is completely different from sound design. Music is and can be more symbolic to the character and the scene they're in. There's a whole discussion for another video, okay? We'll cover music some other time. So the importance of sound design in a film or in any media and how it can affect your audiences. For that, let's grab an example. Let's say Endgame, the very last scene, the fight scene, the big hurrah of all this. With the sound effects and sound design in it, it just sells so much more this world that they're in. Every punch, every sound effect is out there and real. And it feels real because, well, is sold well and designed well for that world. Now, if you remove that sound, yeah, I get what's going on, but the punches and sound effects are, are no longer there. Things don't feel as punchy, as, as big, as grandiose. Or what if it was sound designed poorly? You just add sound effects from your local uh, audio library sure. and not mix them well. They just stick out and become so distracting. When it's done right, it's done right. I've never heard the sound of lightning being shot out of a hammer, but thanks to Avengers and its awesome sound design, I believe that it could sound like this. And now moving on to dialogue. If dialogue isn't properly recorded or if it clips or it sounds very low quality in your scene, it becomes extremely distracting. No matter how good your camera is, no, no matter how good the cinematography, if I can't hear what they're saying, I'm missing information. And nothing spells out inexperienced more than someone who focuses more on video than they do with audio. A great example would be Birdemic. The very first sound bite you hear is this. Now, do you really want to stick around for that? Yeah, a lot of people have. The movie was sold, so go watch Birdemic, everyone. To even further drive the point, here's a small skit. <laughs> the negotiator. So. What? You know what they do to scum like you in prison? I, I didn't understand that. What? Play pretty. I'm sorry. What? I'm taking this package whether you like it or not. Listen, I brought the end of my deal, okay? Now where's the end of yours? Your money's in an offshore account. Just... just take them. Just take them. Just know that at the end of all this, I will be the last one laughing. What? Oh my God, just go! God! Worst deal ever, man. Worst deal ever. <laughs> you see? 
Even though the video quality is good, we're still missing half of the plot, half of the story. It becomes irritating and distracting when the sound isn't there, when you're missing so much. And as an artist, that's the last thing you want, is to distract your audience and have them go somewhere else. So we've talked about how sound can be extremely important for your projects, but what tools can you use to get better sound? Well, this is an indie bin. Now, roll the indie bin intro. <laughs> Item number one, the Zoom H1. The Zoom H1 is a nice, small, portable, external audio recorder. You can place it on top of your camera and it can record better audio than your camera can, or you can screw it onto a stand, put it near the talent while they're talking or delivering the lines in your film, and boom, I'm gonna be lazy and bring up my list, okay? Don't judge me. Number two, it is the Tascam DR60D Mark II with the Vid Pro XM55 shotgun microphone kit and <sighs> on stage MBP 7000 microphone boom pole, okay? The total is $320. Why such a big jump? First of all, unlike video recording gear such as cameras or DSLRs, audio equipment doesn't become obsolete as soon as it comes out. So if you invest good on audio, you're pretty much good for several years. The Tascam, first of all, it is an external recorder that you can attach right below your camera and right on top of your tripod. The reason why I chose that is because the dials and all the options that you have with it. You can control volume and other things, and if you're like a single person shooting something, you can control it right there. Same thing with the boom pole and shotgun mic. And well, the microphone and boom pole give you more access to where to place the microphone. Usually you want the microphone straight up pointing at the chest because sound travels upwards. The reason why you want a shotgun mic really is because it's more, uh, the simplest way to put it, it's more zoned in. It's more focused in one place. And that's usually where you want it. For example, look at this. Look at that. Right there. I just ruined my frame. Item number three, the Zoom H6 and Sennheiser MKE600 and the KTEQ KE86CC. That's a total of $900, a little bit more than that actually. And that's because, well, again, as soon as you get these sound items, these are stuff that you can reuse for years. The quality on the Zoom H6 that you can record with is very good. Also, you can do the same thing as the H1. Just attach it somewhere and place it down. It just gives you more control. Sennheiser microphones are notorious for being really, really well built and good. They will last you for a very long time. And the boot pool that I mentioned has a built-in XLR cable in it. You can just attach the microphone, hook up your XLR, extend it, and no more twisting or getting cables all over the place. You will be needing an XLR cable to attach the pole into your recording device, but that's just standard. For 30 bucks, you can get a pretty hefty length of one. Also, these are all items that you can use and also record your very own sound effects. Just go to somewhere private. I recommend a closet, fill it up with your clothes and stuff and panning all over the wall and start recording your own sound effects. As long as you mix them well into the scene, it will sell. Also remember, it's sound equipment, okay? So you can always replace and switch several items here and there. Unlike a lot of cameras that need to be specific to the brand, a lot of audio equipment doesn't. If you wanna grab one of the items in the list and swap it with something else, something cheaper even, get something affordable that you can get and later on use. All right, some honorable mentions. The Rode Go. The Rode Go's are beautifully made. You just attach one end to the camera and put the other end on someone's shirt. They're perfect for interviews. They sound a lot better than your on-camera mic also. Honorable mention number two, shotgun mics. Adding a shotgun mic to your camera, even the cheapest one, will almost always sound better than the on-camera mic audio. And honorable mention number three, your phone. Yes, you can grab your phone, stick it in someone's face, record the audio. As long as it's not in frame, you're perfectly fine. Even better, add a microphone to it. Even the cheap microphones that come with it with, the, with the headphones and stuff, tape that to their skin, let them talk. Almost anything sounds better than an on-camera microphone. With all that being said, do you learn something? Do you like the episode? If you have some of these sound tools, what do you use? What's some tips that you can give us to record really good sound? I'm gonna leave you off with a quote from Hans Zimmer. Get rid of the sound. Life is too short. See you in the comments below, guys. Ah! Hello everyone, guess what? You made it at the end 
of the video. We all know what that means. This is why I beg. So what I'm gonna beg for you today is to check out a podcast that I was invited in. It's called Blended Cinema. This is where I talk about some of our YouTube stuff and uh, how we're doing growing and what to do to be, you know, a decent YouTuber, I wanna say. And then later we talk about Judge Dredd, one of my favorite just dumpster fires maybe? And we talk about it, we discuss some of its uh, production and what happened in and the outs. Also, we have a little surprise at the end of that one as well. A little performance, per se. Check out the links below, check Blended Cinema, give them a like on their Facebook, and I guess I'll see you in that one. Remember guys, I'll see you in the comments. Thank you for watching Free Forge. Today's episode featured the talented Slayer. Slayer is my cat and his talents include climbing up my leg when I'm trying to feed him and screaming at four o'clock in the morning, probably because he's bored. He kind of sounds like this. And if this video gets over a thousand likes, we will create an OnlyFans account for Slayer! Daily pictures of Slayer doing cat things! And I want to see in the comments below, subbed for Slayer! And remember, sub for Slayer! Sub for Slayer! Sub for Slayer! You gotta, you gotta suffer Slayer guys, please.